Hey everybody, welcome back to another brand new video and episode of Throwback Thursday. Today we're going back to 2006 and opening a hobby box of 2006 Fleer featuring Ken Griffey Jr. on the front. So as you guys know, I love doing these videos on Thursday. We've been doing this series for like two or three years now. We've got tons of videos. Make sure you check out the playlist in the description box if you'd like to watch a bunch of past videos. Now, we've never opened 2006 Fleer before on the channel, so let's go ahead and get started here and see what we can find. There's 400 cards in the set. There's also an additional 30 rookie cards that you can only find in the uh, factory set, and one of those rookies is Justin Verlander, so that kind of stinks that we won't be finding Verlander today, but we will be looking for Hall of Famers and some other rookie cards in here like Ryan Zimmerman. And it says, look for an insert card in every pack. So insert mania still going strong, I guess, in 2006. I was not collecting at this time. So I don't think I've ever opened a pack of these before. It should be pretty interesting. So we give you a quick tour around the box. Let's bring in our sponsor. Jack has sponsored this video. Jack, thank you very much. Really appreciate that. If you'd like to sponsor a video like this one or participate in our case breaks, we'll be live coming up here on Sunday with 2021 Donruss. Make sure you check us out on Patreon. It's $3 per month. And with all that said... Let's go to get started and see what we've got in this 2006 Fleer hobby box. There's a total of 36 packs. Reminds me of the good old days when all the cards or all the uh, boxes had 36 packs. These packs back in 2006 used to run you $1.59 apiece, which, I mean, uh, nowadays that doesn't seem that bad. It looks like there's no odds on there for any of these inserts. I'm going to have to get my... Handy dandy Beckett Almanac ready to go in case we do find some inserts. I can tell you what the odds are. Maybe they have them listed there. Luckily, it looks like they do. So here we go. Let's pull all these packs out just to give me a little more space. Get them all situated on the screen. And see what we can find. Like that Griffey Jr. is on the front of this. All right, pack number one. On the back, we've got a Steve Stemmy. And I don't remember him at all, but these uh, the backs of these cards look very, very Fleer-esque, if that's even such a word. There's a Eric Bedard, Hall of Famer, Vladimir Guerrero Sr., Mike Esposito with the big old rookie card logo on there. Okay, we've seen that rookie card logo before. Upper Deck used the same one. Alfonso Soriano, there's the O-Dog, Orlando Hudson, Tim Wakefield, sporting a beard. Don't see Wakefield with a beard in too many of his cards. Kind of a cool look there for one of my favorite pitchers during this era. I used to, I'll tell you what, the Red Sox used to be on TV a lot back then. I mean, they still pretty much are, but anytime he was pitching, I was tuning in. There's Carlos Beltran, Brian Bullington, former Pirates first round pick. I think he might have been first overall in the nation, which was just a awful pick because he never turned out. There's Roy Halladay. He's a Hall of Famer. And by the way, insert in every pack. So we've got smooth leather going on right there. Kind of a nice one. Now, just looking over at the price list here, the most valuable insert card that you can find, it's listed at $80. It's Fleer Autograph, Autographics. Obviously, that's going to be the most one. Ken Griffey Jr. Fleer Fabrics. But it looks like most of these insert cards probably aren't worth that much. Team Fleer is not that bad. A lot of those in double digits. So, a Mike Messina insert card. There's El Caballo, Carlos Lee, and Ryan Jorgensen is the last card in pack number two. Tomorrow we'll have face-off Friday for you, the Panini edition, as 2021 Donruss is supposed to be dropping tomorrow. So we'll get ready for that smoke and heat insert card, Carlos Zambrano. That's one thing that I felt Fleer did pretty nicely back in the late 90s. I thought they had some pretty nice inserts. Um, I forget what year they started putting an insert in every single pack. It might have been 95, 96, 97, but I, I do remember... Picking up Fleer solely for the insert cards. There's Rocco Baldelli, a Todd Walker. Hey, we've got a league leader card there, a team leader of uh, Todd Helton, possible future Hall of Famer, Chris Duncan, rookie card, Brandon Inge, and Alex Cintron is the last one right there. Next up, 400 cards in the set. Probably wouldn't be that hard to put this set together. Uh, you're going to have um, 360 total cards. Coming out of a hobby box. Now, some of those aren't going to be base cards because you have, you're have you going to have 36 inserts. There's a Stars of Tomorrow, Ricky Weeks. I'll tell you what, Ricky Weeks is a very solid player there in the big leagues. I wouldn't call him like a major star, but a very serviceable veteran. And um, I enjoyed watching Ricky Weeks come through Pittsburgh. We used to play the, uh, the Brew Crew all the time. 
Of course, we still do. They're in our division. There's a Craig Biggio Hall of Fame right there. Uh, Josh Wilson, we've got a Smoke and Heat. Kurt Schilling card. Nice one right there. It'll be interesting to see if he ever gets into the Hall of Fame. Chris Shelton used to be a masher in the Triple A um, league with the Buccos, the Indianapolis Indians. Man, he used to put up big numbers there. Ended up going over to Japan to try to maybe break through. I don't know whatever happened to Chris Shelton, though, but man, could he hit. Came up for a little cup of coffee with the Buccos. Saw him in batting practice. He was routinely putting them in the second deck out in left field, which doesn't really happen too much all right next pack We've got the nationals bernie castro there there's jermaine die had a nice long career lots of dingers for jermaine die frankie cordero former closer there's julio franco probably still playing baseball somewhere troy glaus i think frank some people call him franco some people call him franco um correct pronunciation is probably franco but uh julio franco played until what age like 49 Michael Kadire might have actually had a shot. There's a Pedro Martinez. He might have had a shot at 3,000 hits if he didn't go overseas and play in Japan for like three or four years. Jim Tomey, Hall of Famer. Rich Harden, part of those young um, athletics pitchers from this area. Everyone was all pumped up about Rich Harden and uh, Mark Mulder and Barry Zito. Kurt Schilling once again. And Nelly Cruz rookie card. Very nice. That is, for me, the best card so far. Nelson Cruz still around at age, like, what is he now? Like 40, 41? And still getting it done. The guy can absolutely rake. That DH position, luckily, is going to allow him to stay on the game for probably at least another year or two or three. Nelly Cruz, not the best fielder. For sure, but uh, and just an awesome player up there at the dish. There's Albert Pujols in his prime. There's a story that came out. There's Smoke and Heat, um, King Felix, about Albert Pujols last week or earlier this week when um, there was a, I guess, a front office executive from the Marlins went on a talk radio show down in Miami and um, said that it's widely known by every single front office in baseball that Albert Pujols is not 41 years old. He's actually 44, CC Sabathia, Adam LaRoche, uh, which is pretty crazy. So we'll see. I think Pujols has one more year left on his deal. He's, I don't know the exact number of dingers he needs to get to 700, maybe about upper 30s. He's close, but he's, it's going to take him at least two years to get there. We'll see if he can catch on with another team. Maybe there'll be a minor league deal out there for him somewhere for next year. And uh, we'll see if he can play his way onto a club. I'm sure some of these clubs that might be out of it might welcome that revenue, that gate revenue from tickets from people coming to see Pujols in the twilight of his career and try to chase down 700 dingers. Haven't had a guy hit 700 home runs in a long time. A-Rod came close. Alex Rodriguez had 696. He would have had 700 if not for being banned for an entire season. At the, like his age, like 36, 37 season. Uh, there's Ryan Zimmerman rookie card, which is another nice one right there. Zimmerman still has a couple years left maybe in him. He's only 36 years old. Derek Turnbow, former closer there, had some really nice stuff going on. He was always tough to hit for... That I don't want to call him a flash in the pan, but um, for that bright spot that he had in his career. Troy Glaus was a very nice player. Jason Bergman, Craig Breslow. There's Eric Chavez. It's called Lumber Company. That's the insert set, in case you're wondering. Joe Creedy, Ryan Howard, former MVP right there. Pulled a Ryan Howard out of one of our Mystery Monday, um, Mystery Box Monday packs earlier this week. It was actually a triple threads sealed pack and he was the autograph in there ken griffey jr the cover boy of the box that's a nice one yadier molina is going to be in the hall of fame someday yvonne rodriguez is already in there paul canerco i don't know some people think that he might you know should be deserving of some consideration for the hall of fame canerco with 400 plus dingers i believe there's a greg maddox wow this is a great pack maddox jeter who else is in here <laughs> Along with uh, Griffey and Yachty Molina and Yvonne Rodriguez. That was a really nice pack right there. Lots of stars from the uh, past and um, lots of Hall of Famers in there for sure. Jeremy Burnett with the Pirates near the twilight of his career, although being featured in a Cubs uni. Gary Sheffield, maybe someday he gets in. A-Rod will be a really interesting case study. Randy Johnson, Hall of Famer. He looks weird in the Yankees uniform to me still. Adrian Beltre will get in, 3,000 career hits. But uh, A-Rod will be up, coming up here in, I don't know, a couple years. He'll be eligible for the Hall of Fame. And, man, does he ever have the numbers to get in there. 3,000-plus hits, 
696 home runs. Um, but he's got the PED stuff, of course, was suspended for an entire season. I don't think A-Rod's going to get in. If uh, Bonds and Clemens haven't gotten in after nine years of eligibility, I think A-Rod's going to be right there with them, probably fetching 50 to 60% of the vote and falling short of the 75% that he needs to get in. That's a nice Ichiro leather uh, insert card right there. And Lance Berkman had a really nice career. Luis Gonzalez... The second baseman, not the Luis Gonzalez, you all know, the hero of Game 7 of the 2001 World Series. He fought off a Mariano Cutter literally on his knuckles for a little bloop over Derek Jeter's head to win that game. Apologies to Yankees fans for bringing up that awful moment in your past. There's Scott Casimir. Benji Molina, part of the Molina catching trio. There's a Miggy Lumber Company, an early Miguel Cabrera card. Chipper Jones, Hall of Famer, Carlos Pena, Chad Tracy, and another Miguel Cabrera there with the Marlins. Back in the Marlins' heyday, Marlins have been to the playoffs, what now, three times. The first two times they're in, they won it all in 97 and 03. Of course, they made it last year as a wild card team. It'll be interesting to see what happens this year with the Marlins. Man, do they have a tough division going on right there in the National League East. There's a Frankie Liriano rookie card. Nice one right there. Jason Worth without the giant beard. And Vinny Castilla, who um, throughout his career really flourished in Colorado. But everywhere else he went, if he wasn't in Colorado, he wasn't putting up nearly the same numbers. All right, Jack, let's see what we can find in the next pack. We've got a Dodgers hit right here, a Dallas Perez. Scott Feldman rookie card. Brady Clark, Joe Maurer, nice one right there. A lot of people think Maurer should get into the Hall of Fame when he comes up um, for eligibility. We'll see. Personally, I think he's close, but I don't know if he's going to get in or not. We'll see. I'll tell you what, though. If I have to choose between, like, Ted Simmons and Joe Maurer, I'm choosing Joe Maurer. Uh, I, I just don't know if um, he has the overall stats. He signed that big deal with the Twins and just didn't really put up the same numbers after that. Hey, we got a hit there. It's a Luis Gonzalez. Already mentioned him. Luis Gonzalez, the hero of the 2001 World Series. His game-used jersey card right there. That's pretty cool. We'll go ahead and put that in the hit pile. We've also got a, a Bobby Abreu, who's getting some consideration for the Hall of Fame. Eric Gagne, former Cy Young Award winner. I think he won it in 2003 with his filthy stuff, throwing 100-mile-an-hour fastballs, Bugs Bunny change-ups, and crazy breaking balls. John Garland, Moise Salou. Sammy Sosa looking really weird in a... I just can't get used to that. Can't get used to seeing Sammy in a uniform, in, a, um, in an Orioles uniform. He also played for the Rangers for a season. It just doesn't look right. There's a Jeff Bagwell, Jeff Francis, Smoke and Heat, John Smoltz with the Braves. He was another guy that played for two other teams besides the Braves. He played for the Cardinals and Red Sox. So just doesn't look right. Reggie Sanders looks like he can barely even finish his swing. He's just so jacked. And there's Alfonso Soriano. Remember that elusive 40-40 club, 40 homers and 40 stolen bases. Doesn't really seem to get much recognition for it, though. Here's our next pack. Jim Edmonds, who could go get it with the best of them. Um, looks like a Jorge Posada with some sort of remnant from the factory. On there, we'll toss that one aside. Doug Menkevich. They definitely weren't all about airbrushing the uh, photos there. Doug McCavish with the Royals featuring his Mets uniform. Matt Capps, rookie card. They used to call him the big bull rider here in Pittsburgh. He would come out to uh, a country song. Um, the song generally said, I'm a big bull rider. And I, I don't know, maybe you've heard that song before. Personally, I haven't listened to much country in my life, so I'm not exactly sure who sings that. But that was his nickname. We've got Frank Thomas, the big hurt, right before he went over to the Oakland Athletics. Jason Schmidt, former Bucko, right there. Brad Lidge. I like Brad Lidge a lot. Uh, I really think he's a great analyst on MLB Network. And Mark Mulder is the last one there. So we're down to about maybe about a dozen packs left. Thank you very much for watching this video tonight. Hope you guys are having a great Thursday. Make sure, by the way, if you're new here, you hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you along for all of our videos. There's a Joe Maurer, Stars of Tomorrow card. Brian Giles, Morgan Ensberg. We got Matt Holiday right there and Todd Walker. Kind of all these guys, kind of sad seeing all these names from the past. Now retired. Not too many active players in this anymore. Jumping Jack Flash, Shea Hillenbrand, Aaron Harang. Let's see if we can find an active player in here. There's A-Rod, Mike Messina, Hall of Fame right there. Victor Martinez, Anderson Hernandez, and Tom Gorzolani rookie card. 
I'm a big fan of Tom Gorzolani. He's a cool guy. I used to talk to him on occasion at PNC Park. Big Dave Matthews Band fan, by the way. Uh, Zach Duke. Pat the Bat. We've got Eric Hinsky. Jeremy Bonderman. Jose Valverde screaming there. There's Scott Podsednik. There's Pedro smoking heat. I've seen a lot of those smoking heat insert cards. They're almost not like a, an insert. I mean, I guess they are, but they're so common. It's like one in every other pack has one of the smoking heat cards. There's Raphael for call. Trevor Hoffman, he's a Hall of Famer. Second all time in saves to the great Marian Rivera. Love this card. Ken Griffey Jr. with the. Cincinnati Reds, Willie Mo Pena was a batting practice hero. Never really worked out in the games for him, though. Just the whole putting the bat on the ball wasn't, you know, his forte. But, man, could he mash, smash 500-foot dingers in batting practice. Dave Roberts, of course, you know him. He's the manager now of the uh, L.A. Dodgers. Joey Devine, rookie card. That is, um, I guess that's some sort of insert card. You can see it's a, like a gray border on there. And uh, since there wasn't an insert in there, that's got to be our insert card for that pack. Let's see what else we have. So far, best card of the video for me, probably the Nelly Cruz rookie card. Luis Gonzalez uh, relic and the uh, third place Ryan Zimmerman. We'll see if we can hit another hit in here. There's no guarantee, I don't think, on the box of an autograph or anything like that. Although they do have an autograph checklist with Ken Griffey Jr. on the checklist. That'd be nice to find that one. There's Sean Figgins and Mark Woodyard, or Woodyard. Don't ever remember hearing that name before. That's a new one to me. So we've got five packs left after this one. David Wright is on the back. Miguel Perez there on the front. Scott Rowland likely will be in the Hall of Fame someday. Bernie Williams had a great career. A lot of folks think he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. He is immortalized out at um, Monument Park in center field at Yankee Stadium, but not in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Kind of a... Uh, you know, kind of overlooked. He had so many stars on that dynasty team with the Yankees. Ronnie Paulino, former Pirates catcher. Craig Hansen, he was, uh, I forget, he was on the Pirates for a little while, part of a trade. I can't remember exactly which one off the top of my head. I have to think about it a little bit. Jason Lane, who tried to come back as a pitcher later on in his career. He was probably like 40 years old. I don't think he ever uh, really made it, but he came back as a, you know, Made his way through the minors, but didn't quite make it back to the majors. We've got four packs left. By the way, if you haven't hit that thumbs up button yet, I'd very much appreciate that if you could do that for me. Mark Gresselonic right there. Carlos Guillen. Man, by the way, a lot of people mispronounce his name. Carlos Delgado. I'll tell you what, if I had a Hall of Fame vote, I would have voted for Carlos Delgado. It just baffles my mind how guys like Carlos Delgado and Fred McGriff are not in the Hall of Fame. Talk about snubs. Freddie Garcia is on the back. There's B.J. Ryan, former closer there. Danny Sandoval. Angel Barroa. we got a Vladdy Guerrero. Adam Wainwright rookie card. How did I overlook this one? Probably because Beckett never updates their prices, so I just kind of scroll through to see the most valuable cards. And uh, they'll have um, Adam Wainwright. Let me just see this for a second. Card number 87, Wainwright's valued at 75 cents. I didn't even look at that because it wasn't double digits. But then they've got guys like uh, Booth Bonds are at a dollar. And uh, who else do they have that's just ridiculous? They've got um, Frankie Liriano. I love Francisco Liriano, but come on, $1.25 for his rookie card. And Adam Wainwright, 75 cents. I, I just I don't think they've updated their prices in maybe a decade. And this is uh, last year's version of the uh, Almanac for Beckett. Uh, I would say you can never rely on Beckett prices just because the market is so ever-changing. Um, you've seen the price boom of 2020. The best, um, the best indicator is recently sold prices on eBay, especially for the higher-end cards. Got a Roy Oswalt smoke and heat card. And we're down to our last pack of the night. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys have had a... Great Thursday. Hope you guys have a good weekend and can join us for all of our videos. We've got a lot of good stuff planned for you guys. John Smoltz, Hall of Famer right there. Jeff Kent should be a Hall of Famer. I don't know why he's not. Just because he's got a surly personality. I guess they've held that against him. There's good old Bartolo Colon. And the final card, sorry, is Jason Giambi. So that'll do it. Finish just in the nick of time for me to go get a drink of water. I hope you guys have a great rest of your Thursday. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you all tomorrow for Face Off Friday. And if my box comes in, a brand new preview video of 2021 Don Ross. Good night, everybody.